Hey guys, working on a few other videos, but something popped up over at the MMACommunity.com, so I wanted to quickly throw this one together to dispel of a common assumption that I see going around a lot. Close out now if you're not caught up through Season 6 of Game of Thrones. So most people think that Valyrian Steel can kill the Night King, but I don't think it can, and I'll explain why. Let me take a step back though. So my partner over at TheMMACommunity.com, user Song2, mentioned that he just realized Jorah and Lyanna were related. What an idiot, right? No, I'm just kidding. So I responded with a wordy post about the Mormons, long story short. Jorah is Jorah's son, Mage is Jorah's sister, Lyanna is Mage's daughter, so Jorah and Lyanna are cousins. Good catch, Song2. Then, on our Game of Thrones Season 7 thread over there, I mentioned how it would be cool if Jon eventually gave Longclaw back to Jorah. And my buddy Conor McGregor Nuthugger was kind of hurt by this. But don't worry Conor McGregor Nuthugger, it's not that I don't like Jon. I just really want to see Jon wield the legendary sword called Dawn. Dawn is basically the Excalibur of swords within Game of Thrones. Very high level recap of Dawn for anyone that isn't aware. Dawn is a sword that was created from a meteor. It belongs to House Dane. So Arthur Dane was the last to wield it. No one has used it since Sir Arthur Dane's death because you have to prove yourself worthy of it. If you didn't know, the Danes are from Dorne, which kind of sounds like Dawn, right? Dorne, Dorne, Dawn. Hold the door, hold the door, hold the door. Okay, so Starfall is the Danes' castle down in Dorne, and according to George R. R. Martin, Ned returned the sword to Starfall after the baby shower at the Tower of Joy. It's worth noting though that some fans think that Dawn is at Lyanna's tomb. We'll have to wait to find out. But let's get back to the main point of this video. People assume that Valyrian Steel can kill the Night King. Don't get me wrong, Valyrian Steel Blades are awesome, but we don't know that they will work on him. Fire kills whites, and both Valyrian Steel and Dragonglass kill white walkers. But the Night King is not a white walker. He created the white walkers by ice magic. He's got Dragonglass inside of his chest. He's different, he's way more powerful. So maybe Valyrian Steel Blades will work on him, but I doubt it. There's only one of him, and there are a lot of Valyrian Steel Blades. It only seems fitting for there to be just a single sword that can hurt him, Dawn. There's no sword like it, it was made from a meteor. Moreover, the name sort of foreshadows the coming of a new day. When the darkness is defeated or the darkness is pushed back to the lands of always winter. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, and I would be shocked if the sword dawn does not play a part in this. And that, Sir Conor McGregor, is why I indirectly want Jon to give Jorah a long claw. Because if he does, it probably means that our boy Jonathan is rocking the legendary sword dawn. Boom. And just for fun, I'd like to throw another idea out there for you. Let's pretend they melt down either Widow's Whale or Oathkeeper. I'm going to go with Oathkeeper because the name would be cooler. You'll see. Stick with me. So those swords were created from Ned Stark's Valyrian Blade called Ice, right? So the goal here is to create a sword that is a song of ice and fire. That's the first half. Oathkeeper represents ice. Now let's pretend that someone finds Blackfire, the Valyrian steel sword that Aegon the Conqueror used. It's currently missing, but let's find that and melt it down too. Blackfire represents fire. Then we can create a new sword from both of those swords, and this new one would be born from a song of ice and fire, and we can call it Oath Fire, or Ice Fire, Fire Ice. Fan fiction, Dawn is where it's at. So here's a question for you guys, unrelated to this video, a question about the last hero. So a couple months ago, my lady Elena Terrell mentioned a theory around seven heroes. I've been calling it the Song of the Seven or the Seven Heroes Theory. Basically, we've seen magic related to the old gods and Rolor, but we've never seen anything magical in terms of the faith of the seven. So Milady speculates that the religion may have been founded on a prophecy around seven key battles and seven key heroes. Father, mother, warrior, maiden, smith, crone, and the stranger. I still dig that theory and plan on exploring it in future videos, but more importantly, I dig the concept as a whole. The idea that this religion was created thousands of years before these heroes fight to save the world like they're doing right now. Well, what about the Long Night? Did it already happen as lore would tell us? Or has it always just been a prophecy? Are the events that are happening now with Jon Snow and co the first time that they are actually happening? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. And as a side note, Sparta's own Jim Miller takes on Anthony Pettis this Saturday. Hashtag War Jim Miller. So if you're an MMA fan, head over to TMAC, the MMA community.com for the live chat with myself and my buddies over there during the fights this coming Saturday, July 8th. It's an awesome card. It's going to be great. And as an early heads up, I will not be able to do episode breakdowns for season seven until Mondays because there's no noise pollution here. And I don't want to wake the neighbor's baby downstairs by recording late at night. So I'll be doing reaction videos Sunday nights, episode breakdowns on Monday, a Patreon video later in the week, and other theory videos depending on what we see go down in Season 7. 13 days until Season 7, guys. I'll talk to you soon.